In JavaScript, uh, we have if statements, we've got ternary operators, we have switch cases. How does Elm handle dealing with conditionals, right? Like if this, do that, otherwise do this, that kind of thing. Uh, let's dive right into that and answer that question uh, with some examples. So in the bottom, I've got node here, so I can do some JavaScript at the top. I've got Elm, so we can uh, tinker around with some Elm. Um, let's imagine that we are making a program that, um, you know, it sets someone's name based on some condition. This is kind of a weird example. Uh, let's say uh, we let uh, the name, we just define some variable called name and we say if, um, you know, 100 is greater than 50, uh, then the name is going to equal Ryan. Uh, otherwise, um, the name is going to equal, let's do, let's do Scott. Um, so here, uh, what we end up with is that name is Ryan, and that's because this condition was true. So we ran this code, uh, and then uh, if the condition was false, we'd end up running uh, this code here. Um, this is a little bit uh, verbose. It's a little bit weird also to have it in the you know inside of a terminal. Normally we have this in a text file where it's not typing all these dots for us. Uh, but there's another way we can do this. Uh, we can say name equals 100 greater than 50. Uh, then we're going to use Ryan. This is a ternary operator in JavaScript, and a lot of people don't like using ternary because it's kind of it's kind of hard to read the question mark the colon um, it's okay when it's just one of them but as you start to nest them it gets a little bit unwieldy um, let's take a look at how elm handles conditionals um, it's going to actually kind of be a mix of the two things um, so in elm when we want to define a variable uh, we can use uh, an if statement so we can say if uh, 100 is greater than 50 then, um, and then we can say, I'm just adding this white space here uh, for readability, uh, but it is not, it's not uh, essential. Oops, sorry about that. Let me start over. Name equals if Ryan else Scott. So when I run this, when I run this code, uh, I, I get Ryan. So uh, Elm doesn't have statements, uh, like JavaScript has statements, where you can have kind of multiple lines that change variables. Uh, what it has is these if expressions. Um, so every if that you write um, is going to need to have um, an else, uh, because every time that we're doing this, it's kind of closer to ternary that we're doing. So uh, let's take a look at the Elm error message that we get when we don't include an else with our if statement. So I was expecting to see an else branch after this. I know what to do when the condition is true, but what happens when it's false? This is a huge part of what prevents Elm from crashing in production. Uh, the syntax does not allow you to kind of half assign a value. Um, so if the program did get to the a place where for whatever reason this was false, uh, name would just be some invalid value. And because Elm doesn't have like null or undefined or things like that, there's no like kind of garbage value that it can insert in there. Uh, to make sense uh, of what you've typed. So it's just going to ask you to, to handle that. So um, just uh, just like we had, you know, if and else, we also have uh, else if, which allows us to do multiple statements. So I'm going to take a look at this again. We're going to do name. If this, then we're going to do Ryan again. We can do else if, another condition, you know, like uh, 50 is less than 40. Then uh, we're going to do Scott. Otherwise, we're going to do, uh, I don't know, Alexa. So uh, this is also valid code. So rather than using parentheses around the condition uh, in Elm, we just kind of uh, keep the condition between the if and the then. And Elm has enough information to know that this is where it starts, this is where it stops, because it keeps it in between those keywords. Um, anything we put in between then and else is going to be the value that we return. Uh, and then else if uh, is just going to allow us to provide more conditions, more return values. And so um, if we you know, change this condition to be false, uh, this condition is going to be false. So the whole thing will return Alexa uh, instead of Ryan, which is what we have now. So that's kind of an intro to the if statements. Um, every if is going to need an else and elm. Um, but there's another uh, way you can kind of do, do things, uh, which is called pattern matching um, using the case expression. Um, so let's take a look at another example. So uh, let's say um, let's say we're using that name variable, 
uh, in JavaScript, we've got, you know, the name is Ryan and we want to use a switch case. So in the case that the variable name is Scott, we can return, we can, you know, print out. Hi, Scott. Uh, in the case where it is Ryan, we can say, yo, Ryan. Uh, and then for anything else, we can say, who are you? Uh, this, <laughs> this is a switch uh, expression in uh, JavaScript. And as you can see, I, I screwed it up. Uh, I forgot to include a break keyword. Um, the way that switch works in JavaScript is uh, each case will run the code um, kind of after the colon, and then it moves on to the next case. So what happened here is that the name came through. It didn't match this, so it didn't run this. It did uh, match this, so it ran this. And then it also matched the default case, so it so it ran this. So switch cases, I, I didn't do that on purpose. I just, that's something that, that people mess up all the time. But if I use a break keyword, uh, it should have just typed, yo, Ryan. Let's take a look at how this works in Elm. Uh, instead of using switch case, we're gonna use case of. So case name of, uh, let's do the exact same conditions. Scott, uh, we can say, hi, Scott. We're just gonna return this string. Uh, case expressions return values, uh, just like the if statements return values. So rather than printing out things with the console log, uh, we're actually just gonna return uh, the string on the right here. We're gonna return the greeting. So Ryan, uh, yo, we do yo Ryan. And then we're gonna use an underscore. Underscore is kind of like the catch all, it's kind of like the default branch. And that's gonna allow us to have our who are you case. The cool thing about dealing with case expressions in Elm uh, is that they are exhaustive. So what I mean by that is when we were defining our switch case or our switch above, uh, we were able to say, hey, this is what happens when we get Scott, this is what happens when we get Ryan, but we could just stop there and we can, you know, um, give it a name that's not valid and then like nothing will happen. Like none of these branches uh, happen. But because case is an expression, it needs to have uh, a branch that handles every every situation. So if we tried that with Elm, uh, we'd get a problem. So this is the error that we'd get. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger here so we can see what we typed. Um, but this is what we get, missing patterns. This case does not have branches for all possibilities. So we handled the Scott case, the Ryan case, uh, but what happens in every other case? So it's calling out this underscore. Um, so you can add, you need to add a branch and basically tell Elm like, hey, if I ever run into a name that's not Scott or Ryan, I don't wanna crash, what do I do? Um, so that's uh, that's what uh, that error is about. So what's cool about the case expressions um, is uh, if you use them for something like Booleans, so one less than two, uh, we're gonna say yes. If I just ran this, it's gonna be like, hey, what do I do in the false case? And so it, it actually knows about all the possible, you know, conditions uh, that we need to handle. Um, so uh, the true and the false uh, is a silly example. You'd probably use an if statement for this. Um, but uh, when we get to custom types, uh, you're going to see where case expressions uh, really shine. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, if, with Elm, we have if, we have case. And the important thing is that um, all possible code branches just return a value um, so that the program knows what to do. Uh, so that's it. I'll see you in the next section.